Hey everyone, this is yet another bonus video. This time we're going to talk about the significance of your selection of outside air dampers. When you think through all the implications of what is in the energy codes and consider the direction they're headed, that is to make buildings more and more energy efficient, every part and piece of the building system must be evaluated. We've already talked about how economizers are now code in most parts of the country, and that means the old manual outside air dampers are no longer code permissible. So we can no longer put a unit on a building with what is effectively a hole in it, and therefore effectively a hole in the building. And since we're closing up holes in our building, we can follow that line of thought to its logical conclusion, which is we need to be using outside air dampers that not only can completely close, but also have very little air leakage through them when they are completely closed. When the dampers are able to close and provide good air sealing, you help seal up a hole in the building envelope and reduce the rate of infiltration. It also allows the building to operate in an unoccupied mode without bringing in any fresh air while the building is unoccupied. Your leaky dampers, even when closed, are still allowing a significant amount of air in. We don't want that. ASHRAE Standard 90.1 and IECC both publish maximum leakage rates of 4 CFM per square foot for these ventilation dampers. To get the right dampers that comply with this requirement, you should specify that the dampers comply with AMCA Publication 511. Now here's the bonus challenge. Besides nighttime and weekend unoccupied mode, what other modes of operation require the ventilation dampers to be completely shut? The first person to comment below with a correct answer, there are at least two of them, will get a Chick-fil-A gift card. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.